lovely wife that are with us, and they live, where do they live? Uh, about 35 minutes from here, wherever that is. <laughs> okay. I want to talk to you just for a little bit. Take some pen and paper and take some notes down, because I'm going to share some things with you that, that you that you probably have not heard a lot about, but we need to, because we're living in a very uh, demonic society. Wow. Bring him hither to me. A real text will be the entire narrative, but as it seems necessary to select more than just one sentence, I've taken a text out of Matthew, out of Mark, and out of Luke. They almost say the same thing. In our text, there is a particular and desperate case in which a patient who has utterly baffled the skill of physicians, baffled the skill of counselors, continues to be tortured and his body withering and he has a disorder of the mind. There's this crude pity from the crowd. There's this bewildering question from people. And the baffled would-be healers don't know what to do. All of this in this story, can you imagine a young boy that's controlled by demonic powers, throws himself into water, throws himself into flames of fire. He probably is scarred. But the perplexity of what to do. The mountain experience has ended and Jesus is now descending with three of his close disciples as he comes down to the seashore where this young son is. And when we read the text, I see a frustrated church and a frustrated people. The church is frustrated because they can't fix it and the victim is frustrated because the church isn't working. What do you do when church is? Think about it. Into all of this conflict and chaos came Christ, the Christos, full of glory and power, God himself. into the fire, oft times he falls into water. I brought him to your disciples, and he, they could not cure him. Mark 9, 17. Master, I have brought thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And who, wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth and gnashes with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to your disciples that they should cast him out. And they, what? Could not. In Luke 9 and 38. And behold, the man of the company cried out and said, Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he is my only child. And lo, a spirit hath taken him, and he suddenly crieth out and teareth him, and he foameth again and bruises him, hardly departeth from him. And Jesus said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long will I be with you and bear with you? Bring hither thy son. Now, most of the miracles that Jesus worked in the natural world have analogies in the spiritual world. The outward and the natural, many things are symbols of the inward and the spiritual world. But this is a very unusual case, ladies and gentlemen. It appears that the disciples had cast out devils earlier in Luke 10. 
seven and seventeen. They rejoiced coming back with seventy and the twelve saying, demons are subject to us. And Jesus says, don't rejoice that demons are subject to you, but that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Wherever they had gone, this was their united testimony that now, up to this moment, demons had been subject to them. But now they're baffled. They seem to have encountered a devil of the worst kind. In fact, it's a ranking spirit because Jesus says in Matthew 17, 21, but this kind of demon, this kind of demon does not come out except by prayer and the fasting. Never thought about different grades, different ranks of demon powers, but there are. We see him with deviltry, different grades, and he says, this kind, this kind, this is not your normal kind, this kind. Did you know that in Romans 1, there are levels of degradation? There's the natural sin, there's the unnatural sin, and then there's the damnable, irrevocable sin. Likewise, all devils are full of sin, but they're not all sinful and wicked to the same degree. Case in point, Matthew 12. And when the unclean spirit is gone out of the man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and finding none. Then he saith to himself, I will return to my house. He calls it his house. I will return to my house from which I came out. And when he has come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then he goeth he, and he taketh with him seven spirits, watch this, more wicked than he himself. And they dwell there and enter there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first state. So there is a graduation in wickedness. And there is a ranking in the influence of devils. And their abilities and their powers to fulfill their wicked impulses. However, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand, even though there is, there is ranking in the underworld, there is only one chief arc spirit there is only one diabolical devil, and his name is Lucifer. He's called the power and the prince of the air. Somebody help me preach this. He is the God of this age, and the Bible says the whole world lieth in the lap of the wicked one. He stands first, and he is chief in the hierarchy of hell. Speaking of hierarchy and hell, the Apostle Paul speaks of demonic graduation in Ephesians 6 and 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, and wicked spirits. He identifies four different levels of demonic power. In the Jewish Agadah, they teach that there are seven levels of subterranean demonic power and seven levels of angelic power. The Old Testament mentions specific demons. In the Old Testament, you'll find the demon called Serium. It's a hairy demon of the night. Lilith, it's a female demon that promotes homosexuality and lesbianism. Here's another demon, M-A-V-E-T, the name of a Canaanite underworld. Isaiah 28, verse 15, we have made a covenant with death. There is a spirit of death. You've heard me preach against the spirit of death. You've prayed against the spirit of death. I've been in the hospitals where people were dying, and I rebuked the spirit of death, and suddenly death left the room, and they recovered with miraculous recovery. Jeremiah 9 and 20. Listen to this. Death has come up into our windows it has entered into our palaces. It has cut off the children from the streets and the young men from the town square. Corpses of men fall like dung on an open field because of death. In Egypt, the death angel moved up and down the streets in and out of homes looking for the firstborn where there was no blood applied to the doorpost. Proverbs 21 and 16 speaks of the congregation of the shades and then there's a spirit called Rusfis. It's called a plague spirit. 
And then you have A-Z-A-Z-E-L. It's a demon of the wilderness. Then you have Dever. It's in Psalm 91. It's not just poetic grammar. Psalm 91. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night. That is a demon spirit, terror by night. Nor the arrow that flieth by day. That is a demon spirit. Nor by the pestilence that walketh in darkness. That is a demon spirit. Nor the destruction that wasteth at noonday. That is a demon spirit. It's not just poetic grammar. The Dead Sea Scrolls mentioned this demon, B-E-L-I-E-L. It means a scoundrel. He is a spirit of perversion. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a spirit of perversion that has invaded America. I have never seen perversion on TV like we see it today. He used to be in the back alley in some kind of triple X movie house, but now it's on prime time TV in your living room. And you put up with it. You watch it. You condone it. You subscribe to it. Oh, you don't want me to preach this message. You, you just, just sit there, look this way. No, don't look at nobody. Don't look to your right or to your left. Just stay right there. They'll never know it's you that I'm talking about. They inflict sickness. Demons live in desert and ruins in Leviticus 16, Isaiah 13, 34. They inflict sickness. There was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity. I prayed for a lady up in Paris, Illinois. We were in a three-week revival way years ago. This lady came from Oklahoma. It was the end of the three-week revival. Sunday night she came down. And I was given a, a strong altar call. She came down. Her mother came down with her. The spirit of knowledge hit me, and I looked at her, and I said, you're not from this area, are you? She said, no, I'm from Oklahoma. I said, how did you get here? She said, my mom told me that if I'd come, that I might find an answer to my dilemma. And I said, you've been to the doctors just the last few days, and there's something going on in your stomach it's like a thousand needles burning inside your stomach. She said, yes, that's exactly what the doctor said, my feelings, but he couldn't find anything. I told him I've been struggling with this for years. Something's wrong with me. I said, you used to be in the church. You used to be a Sunday school teacher. She said, yes, I did. I said, you, you, you know what Pentecost is about. I said, you used to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. She said, yes. I said, but you backslid, didn't you? And she said, yes, I did. I said, you've actually got really, really backslid. I said, you've done things that are embarrassing that your mama don't even know about. You've been involved in the cult. You've been involved in the psychic world. You've done some witchcraft stuff, some black magic stuff. And she said, yes, I have. And she began to cry. And I said, your problem, the doctor can't solve it, and a counselor can't solve it. There's some things that you can't counsel out. What you have is something that's got to be cast out. I said, do you want to be set free and delivered? And she said, yes, I do, sir. I said, get ready. And I had four of the old saints. I'm talking about the old saints. You know, the kind that grabs your lips and go, blah, 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 and turn loose on one hand and hold on on the other hand. Oh, come on, let go, hold on. You've seen it. Come on, help me. And all of a sudden, they got a hold of her, and she began to violently shake, try to shake out of their hands, and her eyes rolled back into her forehead, just exactly like you see in some of these movies. Yes. No, her head did not rotate 360 degrees. But I began to pray for her, and when I laid my hands upon her, her body arched like she had been shocked with electricity. As God was my witness, she opened her mouth, and out of her mouth came a black vapor as a gas as she went, <sighs> and it went up into the, into the ceiling. I'm telling you, it is real, ladies and gentlemen. We had, CJ and I have had numbers of experiences where there have been demonic powers that, that would come into our church services. I remember one Wednesday night, there was a young man in the very back sitting, and I'd never seen him before, pacing back and forth, pacing back and forth. His hair was all messed up, and he looked rough, and he was pacing back and forth. I didn't know if he was on drugs, and I alerted security, and I said, we got, we got a problem back there. Let's just kind of watch him. And so I'm up preaching, and all of a sudden, this guy literally jumps like he's been shot with a bolt of lightning, jumps over the pew backwards. Now he's against the back church wall. And all of a sudden, I catch out of the peripheral, he's running down the middle aisle of the church. And now we've got a big stage, and he's starting up the steps. 
And I'm here, and, and as I turn, he's already there. And he's coming up the last steps, and he's looking at me, and he's got this wild look in his eye. And he says in a voice that I knew was demonic, he says, Do you know who I am? Just like that. And it caught me off guard for a moment. And then I said, Yes, I do. But do you know who I am? You picked the wrong night to come to church. Laid hand pushed him back into the front pew and I believe God set him free listen to me it is real and I'm going to tell you something get ready because Raines County has a lot of folks that's bound by the devil bound by addictions bound by homosexuality bound by adultery and it's going to take nothing but the power of the Holy Ghost to set people free put your hands together and give God some praise in this house if you believe what I'm saying There are over 100 verses in the Bible, New Testament, Old Testament, that talk about demon spirits. In the Old Testament, the bells on the robe of the high priest were not only for letting people know that the priest was still alive and moving around in the Holy of Holies, but also for warding off demon spirits. The use of horns. You could hear them. Warding off demon spirits. The use of incense. You saw the priest, little, the, little, the little cup of incense, smoke, warding off. How about oil? Anybody ever took some oil and put it on your doorpost? Come on, help me. Am I the only one that's done crazy things like this? You know, put it on my windows, put it on my doors. Had, they, they, people call and say, Brother Bob, we bought a new house, but we'd like for you to come over and dedicate our house. I've actually got the oil. CJ and I, we've been there, and we go around, and we anoint the house, we anoint the windows. I've had people tell me that they had footsteps up in their attic, footsteps they could hear in their attic, and after we anointed the place, the footsteps went away. All kinds of crazy things that took place. I believe there is a real spirit world uh, that runs parallel with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, the color of blue, the color of blue. The color of blue is supposed to ward off evil spirits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I found in the book of Acts, 19th chapter, verses 11 and through 21, Luke is recording a story about the seven sons of Sceva, the sons of a high priest. And they see Paul over here casting out demons. And they have the idea that they would like to try to cast out demons. Hello, this is not a game. This is not a charade. This is not a circus. This is not a carnival. We're not putting on a show. They go over and begin to talk to this man that is demon-possessed. They lay hands on him. They adjure him to come out and listen to what the devil says. The demon spirit rises up in the man and says, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? And he rips them a new one. I mean, he tears them up. There's seven of them, but all seven of them can't handle one man that's demon-possessed. And he literally tears their clothes off. And the Bible says, and they left him fleeing naked. This is not a game, ladies and gentlemen. In my ministry, I've cast out many spirits, many demons. I've had a manifest in my office. One lady had 115 different diverse personalities. She could talk in many languages. She could talk in German. She could talk in French. It was not her talking. It was a demon spirit talking. I'm t Am I preaching something you folks don't know anything about? This thing is real. And you and I are in a battle here in Raines County. Do you hear what I'm saying? We are in a fight to the finish, and we better be ready. We better be prepared because people will walk through our doors, and they're going to be bound by demonic spirits. No, I'm not going to make a show, but I believe they can walk into the presence of God, and suddenly the Holy Ghost hits them, and that demon has to leave. The demon said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Listen to me. The demon... How would you like to have a reputation in hell? Hell knew Paul. I believe hell knows Clark's chapel. 
I believe hell knows Rudy Bond. I believe that hell knows Thomas Griffin. I believe that hell, oh good Lord, I feel the spirit of the Lord. I believe that hell is nervous about what's happening here at Clark's Chapel. Put your hands together. Give God some praise in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They tell me that monkeys in Africa mimic missionaries. They watch from the trees and they see the missionaries gather the wood and make campfires. They have documentation, video documentation, that after a while the monkeys come out of the trees and they get down and they collect wood and they lay it in order. They're pretty smart. I don't believe we ever swung from trees by our tail, but they're pretty smart. But they have not yet figured out the fire. That's a lot like some of our churches. We, we know how to gather the wood. We know how to organize, and we know how to put management in place, and we know how to do the spiritual calisthenics. And listen to me, folks. It's not about that. If it's about that, God tells us we have a form of godliness, but we deny the power thereof. Yes, we look good. Yes, we got carpet. Yes, we got nice padded pews. Yes, we got a great sound system. Yes, we got great singers. We've got her all together. But I've never seen the church have so much and do so little. I heard somewhere a spring whose waters had certain medicinal properties. And so those who drank from it were healed from various infirmities. In the course of time, homes were built around it, sprang up around it. And then there was a hotel, and then there was retail stores, and eventually the town grew into a city. Sidewalks, and highways. But there came a day when visitors would ask, by the way, where is the spring from which this city grew? And the dwellers of the city would rub their hands with embarrassment and say, I'm sorry, I really cannot tell you, but somehow in the midst of all of our progress, in the midst of all of our improvements, we have lost the spring, and no one knows where it is anymore. That is the sad application of the modern church. Under all of our ecclesiastical superstructure today, we have lost the spring. We are majoring in minors and minoring on majors. We need to relocate the spring. We need to get back to the place where out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. It's time that Pentecost return back to the house of God. Pentecost is not a denomination. Pentecost is an experience, ladies and gentlemen. I'm looking for the sound from heaven. Would somebody give God praise? Sound from heaven has a rushing mighty wind into the house of God. The Father spends all this time trying to keep him out of stuff, get him out of stuff. Mark 9, 20. Jesus, the Father, how long since this thing came to him? Listen to it. And the Father says of a child, of a child. I grew up with the Smurfs. Anybody ever grew up with the Smurfs? You know why they're no longer on TV? You know what happened to them? They were chanting demon incantations in their little riddles. Real. And people got wind of it and protested. They pulled the Smurfs, the Smurfs off TV. You'd be shocked if you started watching what our kids are watching. Hello, help me now. Dungeons and Dragons, that's an old thing. How about Compass? You can actually write in and get a certificate that you own a demon. Everything coming out of Hollywood is demonic inspired. Are you listening to me? It's demonic inspired. 
Here's this young boy. It's a wonder he's not dead. He's been thrown and almost drowned in water. He's been thrown in fire and he's burnt and scarred. And so here you have a beautiful child with an ugly problem. It was compounded by the fact that these struggling preachers and struggling ministries struggled to fix him and were not willing to admit they didn't have what it took to deliver him. There's nothing wrong, nothing worse than to have people practice on you who don't know what they're doing. This is not a game. This is not a place to practice. It's not a place to experiment. It's not a place for a novice. But Brother Kurt, I, I believe with all of my heart, the day is coming when the Holy Ghost will be so heavy, it'll be like a fog. It'll be the Shabbat. It'll be the weighty presence of God. When someone that is bound with alcohol, someone has an addiction to pornography, when they walk into this building, suddenly they'll feel a release. Man doesn't have to lay hands on them. It's not man that does it. It's Jesus that does it. Can I hear an amen from you? Jesus is still. Hallelujah. Look around and touch somebody and say, something's got to change in church. I don't want church as usual anymore. I'm tired of church as usual. I'm tired of the cute programs and the Playboy prophets. I'm tired of that. I want a real, genuine outpouring of the Holy Ghost and fire. I want the church to be baptized once again with fire. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Wow. You'd be shocked to even know the people in this room who are secretly conflicted, faithful, but conflicted. Singing, playing music, but conflicted. Ushering, but conflicted. Serving on boards and committees, but they're conflicted. Saying, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Have you ever been there? Lord, I believe. But what I see is making me struggle. And it says, oft times, he, oft times it casteth him into fire. Now, oh, oft times. You, you read that, and you don't understand what he's saying. Oft times. Oft times. It comes and goes. You ever met somebody and you said, well, they're not like anything I was told they were like. Just stick around. Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde may show up. Have compassion on us. He didn't say have compassion on me. He said have compassion on us and help us. His entire family was affected by this. His friends were affected by this. The community was affected by this. And you can duck your head in the sand if you want to, but I want to tell you there are some people in Raines County that need our help. Help us. Preacher, if you can, help us, Clark's Chapel, if you can. Help us. What's it going to take? I'll tell you what it takes. It takes you knocking on the door. It takes you bringing them to Clark's Chapel. And I, I promise before God, I am entering into a period of fasting and prayer. October is the devil's month. And do you know that the witches and warlocks, they take the whole month off to fast and pray for Halloween weekend? It's time the church do some praying and fasting. Hello, everybody. Come on, it's time we don't just wait till January and we do the 21 days of fasting and prayer, the Daniel's fast. Let's get down to some serious business because this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. You might say, Pastor, you're acting like you're mad. I am mad at the devil, but I am intense with a lazy church. If thou dost canst believe, all things are possible. Most of us are like the Father who with tears says, Lord, I do believe, but help my unbelief. Jesus says, O oh, faithless, perverse generation, how long will I be with you? And that included the 12 disciples. Bring him hither. 
to me. Now watch this and notice. As he's on his way to experience deliverance, bring him here with it to me. As he's on his way, it says in Luke 9, 42, and as he was yet coming, the devil threw him down to the ground, tear him, cruelly convulsing him, and Jesus rebuked the spirit, the foul spirit, and healed the child and delivered him again. As he was coming. <laughs> it's always darkest just before the dawn. I've seen people say, yeah, Pastor, man, I messed my life up. And, and Pastor, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I want to go to church Sunday. And as God is our witness, the devil will do everything he can while you're on your way to mess you up. He'll get you into a fight with your girlfriend or your wife. She'll burn the bacon and the biscuits. Everything that could go wrong will go wrong on your way to him. I call it the last throw. Has anybody ever experienced the last throw? I wanted to change. I was going to start the church. And all of a sudden, all hell broke loose in my life and in my home. Mm. But did you notice when I was reading in 9 chapter Mark how quickly deliverance was there? Jesus didn't talk to the devil. I've talked to devils. I've had him talk to me. We had a lady, demon-possessed, in our living room in Paris, fell on the floor. I asked the devil, I said, how long have you been in here? And with a man's voice, she said, or he said, I've been here since she was a child. Hmm. Let me stop here and say something. You're sitting in this audience. You claim to know the Lord Jesus Christ and your personal Lord and Savior. Your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But have you ever struggled with an area in your life? The Bible says, give no place to the devil. He's talking to the church. Give no place to the devil. How about this one? How about this one? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. Where's the stronghold? Where's the strong? Is it in your heart? In your mind? Is there a stronghold? You can be a child of God and still have a stronghold. I have never seen so many Christians that have strong holes or Satan's hold on them. Excuse me. The Bible says that Jesus didn't even acknowledge that spirit. Thou foul spirit come out of him. Immediately he came and went out. I'm going to tell this story, Brother Thomas, if you'll come. Lester Summerall. Anybody ever heard of Lester Summerall? He's one of the great old-time preachers, old-time preachers. Lester Summerall was down in the Philippines in a hotel, come in after a great service. Thousands were there in that big crusade. He came in, <coughs> tired. You know, they don't have air conditioning down there. The windows was up, the curtains were kind of gentle breeze, and he got in bed. And he said just about the time he laid down on his pillow, all of a sudden, he said he could feel something enter the room. And, the tip, and I've, I've experienced this too. The room temperature began to change. Now, in the month of October, we'll go in deep, deep into this kind of teaching. But the room began to change. He said it was almost like you could whew, see your breath. It chilled that cold. Bed was shaking. He got up out of the bed. The bed actually was shaking so bad that it moved from where it was a few feet. He recognized immediately this was a demonic power that had just entered his room, and he began to rebuke it in the name of Jesus. He began to plead the blood. And folks, there is nothing the devil hates any more than the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what? You, you want an answer to, to demon possession? The blood, the blood, the blood. Just the blood. The blood was on the doorpost and the death angel had to pass on by. He couldn't stand to look at the blood, the blood. And so he began to rebuke the devil. 
And immediately, he saw the curtains move and whatever it was went out the window. It's in his book. He says this, and I believe he probably did this. He looked at his bed that was about three or four feet off the wall. He said, hey, you foul spirit, get back in here and put this bed back where it was. In the book, it says the bed began to shake. Boom. When you have a society that is calling 800,000 times a month to psychic hotlines, we got a problem in this country. Psychic hotlines, tell me who I'm supposed to marry. Tell me what my future is like. Tell me if I'm supposed to do this. Tell me what job I'm supposed to take it. I'll tell you, you need to go back to Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans. I know the plans. I know. You don't need a psychic. You need the Lord. I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you. Stand to your feet, please. Father, in Jesus' name. I feel your presence. I feel your presence. Father, I feel like there are people here that they are silently saying, I need some help. There are people here under the sound of my voice, I really, really, I really believe you feel like there's a curse over your life. Well, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. If I'm talking to you, well, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. If I'm talking to you, and you feel like there's been a curse over your life, things have not gone like they should have, you've, you've, you've struggled, just throw your head up and put it right back down. God bless you, God bless you. My goodness, seven, eight, nine hands. Pastor Bon, I struggle. Can we, can, we be, can we be honest? Can we be adults? Pastor Bon, I struggle with pornography. I love my spouse, but I struggle with pornography. I, I, I got into it, and it's hard to break it. I, I'm going to ask that everyone in this place, listen, not only there are people that struggle with pornography, there are people who struggle with prescription medicine. A friend of mine was taking six to eight pain pills a day because he'd had an accident. He was addicted to pain medicine, Vicodin, Oxycontin. He was going to three different doctors, getting three different prescriptions for this medicine. If you need deliverance from something that has plagued you, maybe for years or just recently, if something has left you and now it's come back and it's knocking on the door and it says, I will return to my house, my house, and I've got seven friends worse than me that I want to bring with me into my house. Maybe this message is to stop the invasion. The invasion by demonic powers into your life. On the count of three, I want anyone that would like for me just to pray with them quietly, discreetly. On the count of three, I need you to come and form a straight line. You want prayer. I can hear you. Like the Father, help us. Have compassion on us. Help us. I don't, I don't want to destroy my home. I don't want to destroy my marriage. I don't want to destroy my life. I, help us. If that's you, Ron. Who am I talking to? Two, come on, help me. Three, step out from where we are. Come and stand. Nobody needs to know. Nobody's going to know. Just come and stand and say, Pastor, I need prayer. I need, I need prayer. I uh, have compassion on us. Help us. Help us. Help us. And Jesus responds and says, If thou can only believe. Can you believe?
Oh, I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. I begin to praise the Lord right where you're standing. Oh, there's a presence. This is not a show. This is not a circus. This is not a carnival. Come on. This thing is real, and there are people that are bound, and they need to be set free. Pastor, I've been tormented. Come on, come on, come on. I'd like for all of my old-time saints, all my prayer warriors, spirit-filled, come and line up behind these. Don't bother them. Don't touch them. Just stand up and stretch your hand out toward them. Don't bother them. I need all my prayer warriors. Come on, all my leaders. Come on. Come on, come on. Come on, Brother Randy. Help me out. You and your wife, come and help me out. Suicide. There's a spirit of suicide in East Texas that I've never, ever witnessed before in anywhere I've ever been. East Texas has the highest rate of suicide per capita of any place in the nation. You foul spirit of suicide, I rebuke you. And there's somebody in this room right now, you have battled with suicide thoughts. 12 million people last year battled with suicide thoughts. 1.2 million attempted suicide in some measure. And 50,000 people committed suicide last year alone. Every 17 seconds, every 17 minutes, somebody's committing suicide. I lost a boy through suicide. CJ and I, we lost our son through suicide. And ever since we lost our boy, I have been sensitive, sensitive. I didn't see it at the time, but I am sensitive to the spirit of suicide, and I feel a spirit of suicide in, in this place right now. There's one or two people that you've been struggling with it, but today is the last day you're going to struggle with it. I said today is the last day you're going to struggle with it. Come on, help me. Come on, help me. Today will be the last day you struggle with it. You're going to be able to plead the blood of Jesus Christ over your soul, your mind, and your body. And those thoughts of suicide are going to be pulled down because the weapons of your warfare are mighty through God. No weapon frame, formed or fashion will be able to prosper against you from this moment forward. In Jesus' name. Pray with me, saints. Sing it, Thomas. The Lord loves you. He really does love you. He really does. <laughs>